What's going on guys, Billy here, and we have got the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual with us here today. This drone has a dual camera system on the mounted gimbal, with one camera shooting 12 megapixel photos and 4K video in regular color like we are used to, while the other shoots thermal images. So this drone, the one that's actually sitting behind me right now, is one of the smallest that I know of that shoots thermal images, especially one that has that dual camera system that I was talking about, one that shoots color photos and one that shoots thermal photos. So what I wanna do today is take a step back and look at how thermal imagery works as a whole and talk about why it would be beneficial. So this right here is video taken on the thermal camera of the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. You either have very little knowledge of what this means, you might be like me when I first started using this drone and have a general idea at what you're looking at, or you might be a seasoned veteran in thermography. Regardless, the first thing that you'll notice is that the thermal image is somewhat blurry because of the low resolution camera. What's great is that we can turn on MSX, which uses the higher resolution color camera to outline the objects in the frame. Just to give you an idea, I've put up some of the important camera specs of both cameras side by side, but what I really want to focus on in this video is how to read thermal photos taken from a drone. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual is just the drone that I'll be using to capture my examples. So I figured a good place to begin would be to look at how thermal cameras work, and I'm going to make this very short, very basic, and bare bones. In fact, I've got a definition written down here in my phone. So basically, temperature information is captured through a special lens that focuses the infrared light onto a special camera sensor that creates a pattern known as a thermogram. Now, I've learned this information from a couple of different videos I've watched and a couple of different sources. I'm going to leave those linked down in the description. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how this technology works, you can go ahead, check out those videos and learn a little bit more in depth. So first up, let's go over some of the ins and outs of shooting thermal photos and videos with your drone. Now, it's not as easy as just pointing the camera and shooting. Sometimes for certain situations, you're going to have to go into the isotherm settings and dial in the high and low temperature in order to get an accurate read. See, thermal cameras can work like color cameras when they're set to auto to adjust the exposure perfectly no matter what you are looking at. In this case, with thermal photos, it'll adjust the high and the low temperature depending on what is in the frame. For example, looking at this roof here, we want to try and pinpoint hotspots to try and find underlying damage. Right now, the engines of the cars on the ground and the asphalt are hotter than the surface temperature of the roof. This means that we won't get the best results. By figuring out what the average temperature on the roof is, I can set the high and low temperature through the isotherm settings to accurately find hotspots and specific temperatures. This is something important to do and depends on the industry that you're in. There are different temperature levels you may be looking for, whether you're fighting a fire, looking for someone in the woods, or are inspecting a roof, or even different instruments at a power plant. Getting an accurate reading is crucial no matter what you are doing, and your images may prove to be useless if you don't set these temperatures accordingly. Varying conditions will always play a factor, so make sure you plan accordingly. Now, if you have a dual camera system like the Mavic, to enterprise that I'm using, you'll be able to shoot thermal and color photos simultaneously with the push of one button. If I shoot a MSX thermal photo, then a color photo will also be taken. When I go into the gallery, I'll be able to see both photos right there in sequential order. This is important to do because the thermal photos, no matter which drone you use, will be hard to use to determine where objects are and what they look like. This way, your client will be able to reference between both of the images. So that is pretty much the first and probably the most important thing that goes into shooting thermal photos with your your drone, it's nailing the high and the low temperature so that you can get an accurate reading depending on what you're going to be using this drone for. Now I want to go into the color palettes. There is five of them on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and it's a little bit tough because depending on which thermal camera you're using, you're going to have different color palettes to choose from. Higher end systems are going to have a lot more color palettes to choose from and also ground based thermal cameras will most likely have more color palettes than are offered on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. So here's a standard thermal MSX image image taken in the rainbow palette which shows heat throughout a different variation of colors with the darker blue and black colors showing cooler temperatures while the lighter red colors show hotter temperatures. For example, this building has a cooler temperature on the roof where the dark blue is at around 21 to 23 degrees Fahrenheit and the darker red area here on the side of the building is the hottest portion of the image at 46 to 48 degrees. The reason this side of the building was so hot is because the sun was setting towards the west side of the building. Now my go-to palette is hotspot which shows all of the cool spots in a dark black while the warmer temperatures stick out in a light gray and the hottest temperatures stick out in a red and dark orange. Looking back at this example of the same building, you'll notice that the top is the lighter color because 
that was where the coolest temperatures were while the side of the building is lighting up bright red and orange because that was the hottest portion of the image the other color palettes that are available are gray which doesn't show any colors it's just kind of a mixture of light and dark gray we've got hot metal which is in my opinion the hardest to interpret because it's just a mishmash of different reds and oranges and then finally we have cold spot you guys pretty much get the idea in terms of what's available on the mavic 2 enterprise dual now depending on which industry you will be using this thermal drone in or whatever thermal drone in you might have a certain color palette that proves to be beneficial to your operation or it might just all be personal preference depending on which one you're able to read easier for my case scenario when i'm doing roof inspections i've found that hotspot suits me well because you are really looking for the areas that are showing the hottest temperature this is usually where the underlying water damage is located for firefighting operations you might want to use hot metal as i've seen depicted on dj's website unfortunately i wasn't able to use this drone at a fire scene uh, cold spot has actually personally been helpful for me when inspecting cranberry bogs it shows clients the cold spots and overall climactic condition of their water to ensure their crops grow properly all right so the isotherm levels like the high and the low temperatures are very important when you're capturing thermal photos and the color palettes are also pretty beneficial to know when you're going to be shooting these thermal images so now i want to talk about actually reading the thermal images and you do a lot of reading on the images as you're shooting them so it's more of just documenting what you're seeing and then getting back and say writing up a report for a certain client or again just reading them on the fly so here's the thing about reading thermal photos you usually use an application like FLIR tools to do some post processing post analyzation of the photos but here's the thing when you open up these thermal photos inside of FLIR tools it doesn't show you any information about those photos except for where they were taken now the reason that this is so detrimental to a drone like the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual is let's say you go out you do a thermal roof inspection you get back you dump all the photos onto your hard drive you're not going to be able to extract any data any thermal or heat data from those images so unless you're going to be writing down the different levels on a piece of paper whether you're going to be kind of documenting the thermal photos you're taking as you're shooting them there's going to be no way to tell what the different temperatures were so what i do to kind of combat this is as i'm shooting the photos i kind of document what the high and the low temperature is through my manually set isotherm settings and then I go and just take screenshots of every single time I shoot a photo. So if I shoot a photo of a whole entire roof and I notice that there are some hot areas, I'll take temperature readings from those areas by simply just taking a screenshot. And from there, I've got to sift through sometime hundreds of screenshots. But that's the way I've been able to kind of go around not being able to extract any data from these images. Now, the reason I think that DJI didn't include this feature, the feature to extract data from these images with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual is to attract people over to their larger more expensive system which is the m210 holding the zen use xt2 camera it makes sense that they're going to give this vital feature to a larger system again to attract people that way but it kind of sucks because unless we have that feature we're not going to be able to read these thermal images properly so if you're going to be using this drone the mavic 2 enterprise dual i'd recommend taking screenshots or documenting the different temperatures for the different photos that you take because otherwise you're going to be looking at a blank photo with a lot of different thermal hot spots and thermal cold spots on there and you might not know exactly what you're looking at if you say take the photos and a week later you're trying to look over them so guys that about wraps up this video it does kind of suck that FLIR tools doesn't work with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual but it is still a great drone it's got a lot of great use case scenarios I've been flying it for about a month now and I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline in the works for the next couple of weeks so make sure you subscribe stay tuned for that and also let me know in the comments what you want to see from this drone I can possibly put something together last minute as I'm about to send it back to DJI if you guys have any sort of, I guess, need for information. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.